Buongiorno again. Uh, it's Sarah here with my friend Mountain, who is the Catholic traveler, and he's taking me on a little tour today of all the different churches of Rome that I don't know very well. Uh, and so this is actually one I've never been in before. This is Sant'Agostino, uh, who the Augustans are an order that I've always had a little bit of an interest in. So he's going to take us on a little tour. So what are we going to see today? So this church, uh, we're just on the top of Piazza Navona, so a pretty popular area, but this church doesn't get a lot of visitors. because There's nobody here. I can't believe you've never been here. Yeah. Um, so this church has in it a Caravaggio, a Bernini, a Raphael, the Saint, uh, Saint Monica, Augustine's mother, um, she's buried here, and it also has the statue Our Lady of Childbirth, where the Italians come to pray if they're having trouble getting pregnant or trouble with pregnancy. Excellent. So we're going to take a little lap around. He's going to show us the highlights. Okay. So this statue here, this is known as Our Lady of Childbirth. So anytime the Italian women are having trouble getting pregnant or having a difficult pregnancy, they will come here and pray, and they'll go up and touch the foot, kiss the foot. Um, many popes have visited this church as well to pray before the statue. And you can see all of the little pillows over here with baby names on them. Um, those are the result of successful pregnancies. So the women will come and leave an offering here. also has a Caravaggio painting known as Our Lady of Laredo. She is the patron saint of travelers because the story is that her house was flown by angels to Rome. Not to Rome, to Laredo. <laughs> <laughs> that's why she's Our Lady of Laredo. So a flying house, that's the story. So what do we have here in the painting? We have uh, Caravaggio's typical style, the chiaroscuro, which is the black background and the figures that are kind of right up in your faces. And the other thing people find very compelling about Caravaggio, if you come and you take a really close look, is that the characters were always commoners, people that were kind of of lower classes that Caravaggio painted. You can see the dirt on the feet of the peasants there. And Mountain was telling me something interesting about the Mary. There's a little bit of a controversy about uh, Mary, uh, how she's portrayed here. And what was the controversy? You never show Jesus' mother's feet. Yeah. You would never show her feet. And there she is, barefoot. She's barefoot. And actually, Italians, even to this day, are really weird about bare feet. They don't like it when you don't have shoes on. They think it's unhealthy. So being shown uh, barefooted in any case, even today with my children with bare feet, uh, we get bad looks from the, the mothers here. They think it's terrible because it's bad for your health. So showing Mary with bare feet is really shocking. Uh, he also liked to be really shocking and making his Marys a little bit sexy. Look at that decolletage there. You can see some shoulder. You can see a little shoulder. Shouldn't be allowed in some Ouch. churches. Exactly. Here we have the tomb of St. Monica. This is St. Augustine's mother. She prayed for the conversion of Augustine. So she is the patron saint of mothers. She's also the patron saint of wives. And she's the patron saint of addicts. So this is a very popular chapel, especially with Catholic women. You also said people come and pray for a healthy marriage here as well. Yes, as well. healthy marriages. So we have a few other masterworks in here, right? We've got a Bernini altarpiece there. Isn't? Right, a Bernini altarpiece. And then there's a little image up there, an icon of Mary that some attribute to St. Luke. Okay. Okay, and then right here we have a fresco by Raphael. Raphael was the great painter who was uh, the competitor of Michelangelo, and he painted in the Vatican at the same time as Michelangelo did the Sistine Chapel and was one of the great favorites of people during the Renaissance. Uh, he was so famous when he died that he actually asked to be buried in the Pantheon of all places. He was the first person buried there. So one of the great tragedies, he died quite young, uh, just in his late 30s. So who is the, the saint in this that we're looking at? Do we know? Uh, I think it's the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah. What we particularly like about Raphael is the, the beauty of his people, the kind of beauty of the flesh. He makes people look really sort of soft. Uh, so he's sort of the painter of softness. And he also, this is obviously a later work because he's using the same palette as Michelangelo, the real uh, jewel tones. He was really affected after he saw the Sistine Chapel and changed a little bit of his technique the church now of San Agostino. The facade of this church was made with marble that came from the Colosseum. So that happened a lot around Rome. They took marble from the Colosseum and built churches. It's Travertine, right? Travertine, Travertine marble, yes. And Monica was originally buried in Ostia, which is where she died, but they moved her body here to this church and then now it's a big pilgrimage site for Rome.
And this is an interesting one to come to just because nobody comes to this church, no. right? Right off of the beaten path here, right off. Piazza of Navona is a one minute walk away. Wow. And people miss this, yeah. So Rome really is full of these hidden gems, isn't it? It is. So yeah. Come to Rome, check it out. All the wonderful churches. We're on the Catholic trail today checking out the churches of Rome.